It's my privilege to introduce the first showcase presentation. One of the most beautiful regions in the state is Appalachia, where I grew up. The topography is both uh, tough and spectacular. Uh, Athens, the city, is surrounded by hills that rise from 300 feet uh, above the Hocking River Valley uh, to even some narrow ridge tops. But it's a, it's a beautiful area. It's full of hardworking people, natural resources, and incredible institutions like Ohio University. From its early industry in salt production, to iron production, to coal extraction, brick making, and shipping on the Ohio River, uh, Athens has been a leader. Today, the largest employer is Ohio University, a large public research institution. Uh, the population of the city is young. It's gaining a reputation for entrepreneurship, ranging from small organic farms to early stage technology businesses. It's a tourism destination. It has unique shops, eateries, and more. In Athens County, there are four qualified opportunity zones, and Mayor Steve Patterson is here to tell you more. Please welcome the Mayor of Athens, Steve Patterson. Thank you, my Congressman. Uh, and I want to thank the director for having me as well. I want to give a quick shout out to the new director for the governor's office of Appalachia. Um, John Kerry is the one who actually said, hey, Steve, you should come down and talk about what's going on in southeastern Ohio. So let me just say this real quick. Um, and that being that, you know, being a mayor and serving on the board of directors for the Athens County Economic Development Council, also as a director for the Buckeye Hills Regional Council and the vice chair for the Mayor's Partnership for Progress, which represents 15 Appalachian counties. I know there's opportunity out there down in southeastern Ohio that is just waiting for people to invest. Next slide, please. So what I'm going to be talking about um, in particular is Athens and the opportunity zones in Athens. I'll also mention briefly the two other the, um, opportunity zones that are in the county. So next slide, please. So here's just a snapshot of Athens County and the four um, economic development, or um, the uh, opportunity zones uh, ready for economic development. Um, and the, you see on the, on the screen Nelsonville track, which captures the beautiful city of Nelsonville. Um, there's also the Albany Village census track, which um, is capturing an up and coming village in southeastern Ohio. Then there's two in Athens. There's the East State Street census track, and then there's also the Stimson Avenue census track, which is the one I'm gonna concentrate on. But before I go there, a couple things within the county that are advantageous to the census track, and I, I know we are so close to Athens County having one of the largest mountain biking facilities. It will be 88 miles on 9,000 acres in the Wayne National Forest, but a lot of the opportunity zone is bordering right on that asset that is coming, trust me. It's gonna be one of the largest mountain biking facilities uh, this side of the Mississippi River. It's gonna be huge. Another asset, just to point out real quick, something we've been working really hard on is expanding Athens public transit, which will go from Albany through Athens to Nelsonville, connecting our cities and villages, but again, an asset within the opportunity zones. Next slide, please. So here's the census tract that I wanna concentrate on. We're referring to it as the Stimson Avenue Corridor. Um, it is one of our major gateways into the city of Athens. Uh, some things I want to point out about this is it, the length of Stimson that we're talking about in the census track is about a half a mile. It's a half a mile of kind of, of mixed uh, retail residential space. Um, it is also worth pointing out, uh, and I'm going to get to this in future slides, we've got some, some major capital that's coming into this through um, the uh, Department of Transportation, Ohio Department of Transportation for a small cities grant that we're receiving that's going to go into renovating the Stimson Avenue corridor, which is really going to allow us to add better features than we've ever seen before in this particular corridor. Something else, if you look at the star in the upper right hand corner there, that um, we believe is an asset that feeds into this opportunity zone, which is a brand new $7.2 million aquatic facility, outdoor water recreation, which is a stone's throw away from the Stimson Avenue corridor. 
Another thing to mention real quick is that the city of Athens is kind of becoming known in the southeast quadrant of the state as the capital of roundabouts. Uh, we were fortunate in getting funding from, again, ODOT, from ARC and a number of other funding mechanisms to create a new roundabout at this gateway, so at the eastern edge, as well as a new gateway into Ohio University, which is key for this particular opportunity zone. Next slide, please. So here's a, a kind of a, a closer look at um, one of three slides that I'm gonna show you right now for this opportunity zone. If you look at it, um, you'll see that there is a lot of future development in this area. There's some, some older homes that are in there. There are homes that the owners are ready to jump in and sit there and either divest themselves of or to work with any investor to create um, kind of full spectrum housing. So not just um, um, affordable housing, but it'll be retire in place. As you know, we have Ohio University, a lot of faculty that would love to retire in the city of Athens and not move elsewhere. So you also see a future hotel that is possible within this, this location. There's some markets, there's a few restaurants, but in particular, we're going to be using that $2.2 million and with our own share, we're looking at a, basically a $4 million project that's gonna make a complete street through this corridor with new lighting, wider sidewalks, bike lanes, uh, and as well, worth pointing out, the city of Athens by in design and with intention, every time we open the street, we are putting conduit for fiber, stringing fiber through there. This is gonna be another corridor to where we have, we've got conduit underground to create high-speed broadband that is gonna go down to this whole region. Next slide, please. Again, this is the middle section of that, and you see, again, there's a post office in there, but aside from that, that we've got a lot of room for growth and redevelopment, uh, some potential retail space through here, a bank across the street to, on the north side. Next slide, please. This is the final one I'm gonna show you for the Stimson Avenue corridor in particular. This would be the eastern edge. You can see kind of the outline of a, a roundabout that does exist. The slide predated that by a little bit. Um, the, another thing that's worth pointing out in this slide is near that roundabout, we have one of our major assets in the city and within the county, and it's a 22 mile long bike path that runs all the way from the eastern edge of Athens to Nelsonville. It's a great recreational asset that kind of um, really kind of complements what will be the Bailey mountain bike trail system and the Hawking River, of course. But here we see it's an area where it's a single owner that owns a lot of of what is currently rental housing. That owner has been partnering with the city, wants to do something different, um, wants to put in a, a number of um, basically nicer um, uh, either homes or mix of homes and, and retail in this corridor. And then next slide, please. Uh, actually skip to next slide after this real quick. Um, we also have an area where we're looking at putting a, a mixed use um, EMS uh, fire police station, which would kind of complement the anchor end of this to where we have a joint facility between the university's police department, our police department, fire department, like I said, EMS, 911, and uh, other entities in there, as well as a community space inside this facility. Again, this is a, few, this is a potential design. Um, we've been working closely with OU to make this happen. So in Athens, we're open to opportunity. We were willing, I've got a great council. Um, I'm a different kind of mayor in the city of Athens that not, has not been seen for a while. We are open for business. Can you hear me okay? There you go. Wow. Uh, kind of what the whole thing was supposed to be. Public sector, right. mayor, large employer, university, private entities and, and landlords kind of working together, synergy there. Who wants to comment first? Uh, I'll jump in. Thank you for the presentation. Um, I think it was really well done. I think that um, you know, feedback would be uh, for communities to, to really know your strengths, right? The, the, the mayor 
uh, speaks very passionately about the strengths of Athens. Well, that's, that's, that's great to hear. Uh, believe it or not, that doesn't always happen. Um, and it's saying, okay, it's a university town, right? I mean, we, we invest uh, a lot in university towns and ed education sectors. The other thing that kind of stood out to me is, is a city's commitment uh, to uh, invest in, 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 in public infrastructure as well as um, green space. So you know, developers sometimes, uh, dare I say, are notorious for uh, asking for lots of incentives, right? From TIF to uh, impact fees to different things. How can we make a pro forma work? A lot of times those are, are controversial issues. So perhaps we've had success with cities where we rely on cities to really put in the public infrastructure and to really put in things like bike lanes. Uh, the uh, project that, we, uh, that we're doing in Cleveland, um, we're spending a lot of time in Cleveland uh, on the Irish uh, River Bend uh, investment, the red line, uh, uh, green line bike lanes. These are things that cost a ton of money that uh, if we can rely on that public-private partnership, these are things that make uh, our investment a lot uh, easier. And I really enjoyed the, 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 the plan itself and how it connected. And that's the one thing that we look at is that, is it a well-defined plan and is it part of the overall city plan? And because we recognize then that's where you're going to be able to leverage a lot of the particular resources. Now, from our standpoint, the mixed-use development, those are things that we invest in as an investor. There were a few economic development activities uh, that uh, we have not got to that point just yet, but we'll get to that point just primarily because of the, the regulations or the lack of regulations of clarity and what have you for some of the small business pieces. Uh, but I can also even bounce this over to Jonathan is because, you know, some of the things where we're unable, you have, let's say that if it doesn't fit within our complete strategy, that's where fun investments come in. Uh, that we actually, you know, invest in a fund that acts as a, as a, a continuum of PNC of us. And that will be able then to even provide a, another level of expertise around the table to shape it and to understand which, which project comes first and which one would catalyze some of the other opportunities. It, I thought the presentation was great. And I, I've seen a lot of prospectuses that cities have put together. And, and I, I think really the, the goal of, um, a prospectus or a presentation like that is to spark interest so that people will come in and say, I'd like to take a closer look at the police station or the dark fiber or things like that. I mean, it, it's, it's not meant to sell the deal. It's meant to say, this is a place that's open for business. I thought I did a great job on that. Um, obviously, most of the content was focused on real estate. We're 70% private equity operating businesses, 30% real estate. So, I mean, there's, there's certainly a fit there. But, you know, just you're seeing more and more cities uh, saying, you know, here's a manufacturing company that's doing 30 million a year in revenue, and we think they can grow to 80 if we bring in this growth capital. Um, you know, don't, but the operating businesses could be a big piece of that as well. And then, you know, for Arcteris in particular, uh, we like partnering with munis muni municipalities and nonprofits and academic institutions to do their infrastructure. Um, laying fiber. There, there were pictures of big solar panels on one of the slides, doing solar, um, doing the police station on State University land, things like that. The, the model in a nutshell is it should be more attractive to you than issuing muni bonds. If we come in, we pay for the new police station, we'll own it for 10 years, you design it, we will not change light bulbs. Um, we will not, you know, operate the police, that's yours, but we would own that building for 10 years or 15 years and then sell it back to you for a price that we had agreed to on day one. So you know exactly what your cost is. But for us, um, we're taxpayers. We like to own buildings to use the depreciation tax benefit. We see it as reasonably good collateral and we can avoid the depreciation recapture on the back end of the transaction. None of that matters if you're a municipality. So we get a tax benefit that you would have never been able to use. So in those situations, we're really excited to see how we could be a helpful partner. Yeah, the other benefit for people who don't live in Ohio is you all think Ohio's flat. Well, not where he lives. No. It's beautiful rolling hills, as Congressman Stiver said. So that's a plus as well.
All right. Thank you, Thank Mary. You.